Well, hello there. Hi, welcome to my channel. It has been a minute. It's been about a month, I think, since I made something last. Uh, what happened was I got depressed and lost all creative motivation and direction. Am I feeling better now, though? No. However, I just really need to force myself to do something. I need to get out of my head, make a craft, and hopefully that'll make me feel better. So I don't really know what this video is going to be yet. Hopefully I figured it out based on whatever the title of this video is. But I'm here at Michael's. Oh yeah, I'm not really feeling inspired by any of my current ideas or supplies. So we're just gonna walk around. We're gonna wander the aisles and hopefully the inspiration will find us. I'm not going for quantity here. We're not even going for quality. We're just going for a coping mechanism. So let's go look. All right, now I felt like I was more in the mood to decorate something versus like making it from scratch. So I went down the home decor aisle and all of their spring stuff was on sale. And I found this mirrored tray, like something to place on a dresser or a vanity or something. And I felt like it had potential. Same thing with these empty wooden frames. I'm not sure what people do with these in general, but an idea started forming and all their planters were on sale. I liked the shape of this little guy. Maybe I could do something with that. And then y'all know I love a craft clay. I, I never noticed this product before. It's a Sculpey oven bait clay in an ultra lightweight version. And so I got a couple of those. Here's my haul and we're gonna go home and see, see what I can do with this stuff. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna be working with the frames and the mirror in this video. I'm gonna use the Sculpey clay to make some adornments for these, some embellishments. The package of this, if you're wondering, says it's great for like large sculptural pieces or cosplay pieces. So if you wanted to create some custom like armor or a headpiece or something that you needed to be lightweight, uh, this might be a good option. It's extremely soft and squishy, kind of like a Play-Doh consistency. So that could be good or bad, I guess, depending on how you want to use it. I thought it was good. It was easy to mold, easy to work with. Uh, I guess I should tell you what I'm making at this point. These items made me think of a TikTok I saw where this girl took a mirror and glued moss and fake flowers and butterflies to it and it came out looking like a magical fairy mirror which is hey right right up my alley. So that's what I'm going for here. I, I will find that TikTok and link it down below for you. You know gotta cite my sources. I've also started seeing these on Pinterest too so I guess maybe they're they're a trend and I am here for that. So I'm just cranking out a bunch of different mushrooms for this project, different varieties. I got a bunch of shelf mushrooms that would kind of grow up beside of a tree, some like classic Amanitas, cause th those are my favorite. And once I have a shape that I like, I'm just lightly pounding the figure against the table on one side. So I have a nice flat surface, easier to glue onto another flat surface. I'm adding some stems with some kind of like frilly skirts to the upper half. I'll take a palette knife and kind of carve some ridges into the underside of the mushroom caps for a little bit more detail. And then I can just assemble these together. The clay sticks super well, like you don't have to do anything special, just squish the two pieces together. I also made some skinny little tadpole looking mushrooms here with my leftover clay. Hey, maybe we'll use them, maybe not, I don't know, but I like to have options. And then I'm just loading up all these guys on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and popping them in the oven to harden. After these cool down, they are ready to go, ready to paint. They are super lightweight and sturdy. Like I dropped a couple of these on the ground in the process and it was no big deal. I did notice that a few pieces weren't totally smooth, like some had some bumps or fibers or fingerprints on them. So I just took a little extra time to sand those pieces down. It's really, really not necessary. I am just neurotic. Okay, moving on, getting my paint set up. I swear every time I come home from the craft store, my boyfriend is like, you bought more paint? Seriously? And I'm like, well, yeah, I didn't have this shade of beige. Like, do you see how it's different than all my other shades of beiges? And he's like, respectfully, honey, that is the same color. And I'm like, um, well, okay, so whatever. Like, I'm really busy, God. So here I am using my very different beiges and browns and doing like a cute little gradient moment on these mushrooms. That's really the quickest way to get a gradient in my experience. Like just load up two colors on a sponge and like dab, dab, dab until you have your desired blend. 
And uh, these skinny mushrooms, I'm keeping it real simple. Just a few coats of like a darker espresso brown color on the whole thing. Uh, okay, great. Yeah, moving on to the more detailed figures. I'm using a pinky beige to cover the skirts and then an ivory color for the stems. I do want to add some detail to these, but I have a lot of them to paint, so I don't want to go too crazy. I'm just going to do like a few strokes of highlights for the high points of these and some darker shades to get into like the deeper crevices. Then for the caps, I'm doing some in a brighter, more of like a candy apple red, and then some in a deeper, more burgundy color. I'll give some an orange gradient along the bottom with that same sponge technique. And then I can just clean up the underside with some bright white and add in my shading to those deeper parts as well. Now, this is the fun part to me, adding the little spots to the top. It looks more realistic if you don't do perfectly round spots. I'm just using a thin liner brush here dipped in white and just randomly placing it down in like blotches and squiggles. And then I'm gonna take this white puffy fabric paint and go over some of those spots so we get a nice three-dimensional texture here. I did this technique in a previous video where I made mushroom terrariums and I love the effect, so now it's a must. I promise we're almost done with the painting. I have a few more mushrooms left over, some smaller ones without the skirts, and I wanna make these look a little bit different. So the stem I'm gonna keep the same, but the others I'm gonna do like an orange yellow gradient on the top of these, and that's it. And wow, okay, here's all the mushrooms we painted. This took forever and I'm kind of over it at this point, but I convinced myself to add a top coat. You really don't need to do this if you're making these at home, honestly. I just feel like my projects aren't finished without a top coat and I know I'm gonna be adding glue to these and I don't want the glue to pull any of the paint off. So once those are finally done, we can move on to the decorations of the frames. Now, are these frames perfectly fine as they are? Yes, but I just decided I wanted to change them. I found this product at the craft store. It is a home decor antiquing wax. I'm kind of confused by this because it says wax, but it looks like brown paint, so we shall see. I'm stippling the product onto the frame with a sponge, and then I'm taking a lint-free cloth. This is just a piece of a cut-up t-shirt and wiping away the excess. And wait, now hold up a damn minute. That looks cool. Like that looks antiquey. So let's continue, let's do the rest of the frame. I just went over the, the whole surface with it. This process was really fun and it did not take a long time. Here's a little before and after shot. Wow, look at that, I'd say it worked. It's got more like a depth, a richer color, and now I can't be stopped. So I wanna try it on the mirror. We're gonna go ahead and cover that mirror part with paper so I don't ever have to look at this angle of myself again. There we go, that's better. Now you can see on the metal framing, it has what looks like white paint lining all the little nooks and crannies. That's what I'm hoping to turn brown with the antique wax. But then I got it in my head that the brown wouldn't look right with this like bright yellow, almost greenish gold. So I'm gonna change that too. I got this metallic gold leaf wax finish product. We're going all in on the wax. This product is called Rub and Buff. I'm just laying it down with a brush and then buffing it out with my t-shirt rag. And the color definitely made a big difference, I think. It, it looks fancier almost with that white paint accent gone. So I'm gonna finish adding this to the whole piece and then we will move on to the antiquing. I'm still kind of confused by these products because they look like paint, but they don't act exactly like paint. Like this stuff dries extremely fast. The finish wasn't sticky or greasy. It didn't crack. I could see this being a really fun project by itself. If you just wanted to like change up some picture frames you already had, maybe find some at the thrift store. I'm sure there's other things you could do with this if you like the effect, but yeah, I guess this is a win for wax paint. Okay, now we're on the decorating phase. I feel like I've said that before, but now, now it's happening. So I've got my moss, I've got some mushrooms. I had these fake ferns that I cut up for another project. So I'm just cutting off some more of those. I think they'll go well into the mix. And then it's really just a matter of gluing everything down where you want it. I've got my hot glue gun here and I'm gonna cover the lower half or lower third even fully with moss. I got a couple different colors and textures here. 
gonna add in my mushrooms where I want them and my little ferns, just what, whatever looks good to, to my smooth little brain. Okay, and then for the shelf mushrooms, I'm gonna use super glue versus hot glue because they have less surface area and sometimes I get carried away with the hot glue gun and I don't want glue to be squitching out all from the sides, you know, you know what I mean? And I'm just gonna place those on there like they're climbing up the frame. And before I show you the final result, let's, let's go to the mirror first. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just hot glue and super glue, placing everything where I like it. For the shelf mushrooms, I wanted to note that I did press the clay into the mirror before I baked them. So they would kind of have the indentation of the mirror, just kind of making them easier to glue onto the textured surface. So I do recommend doing that if you wanna make something like this at home. But I'm just going to finish this up and then we can check out the after shots. These turned out pretty magical and special. Eee, I gotta say, I think they'd look great hanging on a funky gallery wall or a shelf or something on their own, but you could easily just turn these into a mirror or a picture frame just by adding some glass. They could be a sign or a seating chart at a party, a prop maybe for a photo booth, like really whatever you wanted. And the mirror also turned out pretty neat. I, I love the idea of just stumbling across this thing, hanging in the forest, it's like a magical portal. All my goblin and fairy core girlies out there, if you're not putting your makeup on in front of a mushroom mirror, you you might be doing it wrong. I don't know. I, I got some cute photos of this stuff in the woods. If you like any of these pieces, they are listed for sale in my Etsy shop. I will leave a link down below if you're interested. Go check them out. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!